Hello, everyone. Welcome to Court with Chrissy. Here's the chaos that you didn't catch in court this week. I'm starting with feisty and fun, and the grand finale is Alaska's final frontier, with a bunch of crazy in between. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. Dave versus Douglas Heiser, 21 TR544. Mr. Heiser, there's been an arrest and detain filed by the probation officer in this matter. Your bond will be set at $20,000, cash professional surety, which is a bondsman. There's a list of bondsmen there at the jail that can bond you out. To make bond, you need to be back in court October 18th at 1.30. Uh, if you have the right to hire your own attorney, if you can't afford to hire one, I'll appoint one. Do you know what you're going to do with regard to an attorney? Your Honor, this is a whole, the whole thing is, I have no way of making this, okay? I live in Hayesville. My dog is up there alone. He's about to die because no one's there to feed him. I don't have any family here. My brother, the only family I had here, died last week. And I'm sitting here. I, you want me to report every month? I don't have a driver's license, but I have to come to Wellington. I don't have anyone to get me here. I had to ride a motorcycle down here. I'm breaking violation of my probation just to come report. This whole thing is a from 2021, okay? Did you? Uh, can you answer my question? Did you want to hire an attorney, or do you want? To I can't afford anything. Yo, no, I'm broke. I'm dead broke. Look, I got. I lost my fucking leg. I'm fucking sitting here. I'm my, my right. leg. Mr. My leg. You see, there's no fuck. I can't walk. Mr. Heiser, you need to calm down. If you're going to continue to cuss. You're going to be in contempt. Okay, and then I'll have to jail you for that. Your bond is set at twenty thousand dollars. If you make that bond, you need to be back in court October 18th at 1.30. Yeah, I know you can't make it. There's all kinds of allegations on here you haven't, that, 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 that alleges you've used on methamphetamine and everything else. But we're going to go over this real quickly. Um, you want me to take judicial notice of your prior application and reappoint you an attorney? I'm going to go ahead and uh, reappoint Mr. Brown to represent you. I'll save you from getting any more contempt, uh, contemptuous behavior, save you from jail time there. Mike Brown will be appointed. I'll set this over to October 18th at 1.30. All right. I have a Mr. Timothy Reed here for a first appearance as well, Judge. Timothy Reed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do have that. Mr. Reed, uh, it's like you're arrested on an allegation of uh, domestic battery. Probable cause was found on that. Uh, your bond is set at $5,000. You can post that cash or professional surety, which is a bondsman. Uh, there's a list of bondsmen there at the jail who can bond you out. If you do bond out, you need to be back in court October 17th at 9 a.m. Special condition on your bond, you're not to have any contact with Diana Winesberry. In the meantime, you can hire your own attorney. If you can't afford to hire one, one you can apply for court-appointed attorney. Uh, the application's there at the jail. Um, all right. October 17th at uh, 9 a.m. is when you need to be back in court if you make that bond, okay? Are you hearing me okay, Mr. Reed? Yes, sir. I just... Uh... Dang, you can't let me over out, but uh, Sir, i got to be at work at 2.30. I'm too, yesterday I was, I was, anyway, I didn't even do this. I know I got to talk to you later. Right. But when, where do you work? I went, I work at Spirit Aero Systems. I went yesterday to go buy a car. That's okay. what I'm, I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll, uh, $1,000 OR bond. Dude, I got you. You know, I got you. All right, 1,000 own recognizance bond. There's conditions. You're not having any contact with Diana Winesbury, okay? Yes, sir. And no contact. Be back in court October 17th at 9 a.m. Okay. Right. I don't have a complaint to give you because there, there's not one yet. Uh, this just went to the system here. So uh, in the meantime, you can hire your own attorney. And if you can't afford to hire one, you can fill out an application since you're going to be bonding out here shortly, you can get that from the clerk's office. But it sounds like you're working at Spirit. You're going to be hiring your own attorney, probably. Man, we don't get money, no money like that, and we ain't working no overtime, Joey, for real. You know I ain't playing with you. Well, fill out the application. We'll see where you sit. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to need your hat. 
I'm, 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 I'm gonna need you to really work with me on everything because I'm 54 years old. Diana just mad, man. I don't know, but you gonna have to you gonna have to work with me and her for real. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm saying? Like this ain't no game, man. I can't be. I cannot be doing jail time. I I got a I got a life, and I'm after this. I gotta get to heaven. I'm almost almost over with 55. Shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I get back, help me, man. Help me with everything. And you know what I'm talking about. All right. Yep. All right. We'll uh, stand back in court. You got the date written down, sir? I got it. We got it. But I'm just saying, if you don't ask, you don't get it. Oh. All right. Very good. We'll be in recess until uh, 1030. So you'll need to unmute and start your video if you're able, please. Okay. Thank you. So we are um, on the record in case number 24-2164SD. Um, Ms. Fluke, you're appearing for arraignment purposes this morning on a bench warrant, a failure to comply with bond. You're appearing with Ms. Mistily, the defense attorney available through the Indigent Defense Counsel here to assist you. Ms. Mistily, did you have opportunity to review the allegations on the bench warrant nature of the same with Ms. Fluke? Well, it is a specific well, allegation that she failed to appear for sentencing? Um, on this bench warrant, it is a failure to comply with the bond, uh, but she did also fail to appear for sentencing, yes, ma'am? Okay, so I don't know anything about the failure to comply with bond. I was not sent right. anything on that. Mine just says she failed to appear for sentencing. And when I... Okay. I, I looked up. So let's, go ahead. Let's do that arraignment on the fail to appear for sentencing. Okay. So Ms. Flug advises me that she was in fact present on September 20th at 920. And she specifically recalls waiting in the courtroom that she had her son with her. Something about some school change in the school schedule or some such thing um, that she never Someone had told her the date had been changed, but she never received any notice of a change of the date of sentencing. I also asked her to verify her mailing address because the address that shows on the dispo that I have says street. I did not disclose that to her. Uh, when I asked her, she said her address was so. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but she's adamant that she was there on September 20th. At 9.20. Ms. Flug, your attorney, Mr. Johnson, uh, was here, and he would certainly have known if you were there in the courtroom, right? Um, actually, um, the uh, lady that helped me up at the front of the desk, we got his phone number. Um, is he part of the lawyer's team? He's your attorney and has been since the inception of the case when you requested a court-appointed attorney. Okay, I am so confused. All I know is I was there and I have been doing my PBTs and they've all been clean. And um Okay, well, that's not necessarily um, true. We have a number of positive PBTs that a bench warrant was also issued for. Um, and it sounds like there, there is an issue maybe with confusion, but I believe that your uh, failure to appear for the sentencing um, and you're requesting a hearing with regard to that. Is that right? Yes. Okay, well, um, you were ordered to take daily PBTs. Uh, we will get the hearing scheduled with regard to the failure to appear for the sentencing. I am going to order that you will post a bond of $5,000, 10%. Uh, and if you cannot post that bond, you'll need to turn yourself in to the, to the jail pending the time of the hearing. Uh, I'm also going to order that you must have a continuous alcohol monitor uh, in that you, the allegations are you, can, you have not been and cannot be compliant with the terms and conditions of the bond by not using alcohol. 
Uh, so I believe that it poses a risk to public safety as well as a risk of you failing to appear uh, in court. So your bond between now and the time of the hearing will be a 5,010%. You need to post that today uh, before three o'clock or turn yourself into the jail by five o'clock. Uh, you'll need to contact Community Corrections Pretrial Services immediately so that you can uh, schedule a time today with them to be placed on a continuous alcohol monitor. <clears throat> you need to get in touch with your attorney, Mr. Johnson. Okay, can I get those phone numbers from her? Um, the people that I need to call and the phone numbers, please. So you'll need to contact pretrial services. Pretrial. Community Corrections Pretrial Services. It's okay. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to write that down. It's what on nine four nine two. Yes, and you should make that call immediately. I will do that. Okay. And again, you'll need to post your bond. It's 5,010%, so it's $500. You'll need to post that today before 3 o'clock or turn yourself in to the jail in Grand okay. Traverse County pending the, uh, the hearing. Okay, and then what is the um, lawyer's number? It's, it's Matthias two, Johnson. It's two three one. Okay. You you Six, really seven, need eight, to stay eight, in eight. touch with Ms. Flu. You really need to stay in touch with your lawyer. Um th that's critical. So please make sure you call him this morning. I will call him immediately. And um, do we have the next um, date that I need to have all of this done by before I go back to court? It's today. Oh, I need to have all of this done by today. Correct. Three o'clock today, you need to post a bond. Today, you need to get the continuous alcohol monitor. That's all today. And the court will mail you a I notice of the day and time of your hearing. Okay, and where do I go to get this um, monitor? It's at the courthouse. It's the phone number that you were given for Community Corrections Pretrial Services. The 922. All righty. I will get that all set up. Do you have any questions? Um, If I do, I should call the lawyer, correct? Absolutely correct. All righty. And he's informed of everything that happened. Uh, you can let him know what's happened. Okay. I will let him know. All right. And tell me your mailing address, please. It's in And that's in Interlochen? Yes, ma'am. But you did get the message, the notice in the mail for today's arraignment. Is that right? The only reason I got this one, this notice, was because I actually went to the courtroom. Like I said, I had. Okay. Uh, so for right now, then, uh, you are all set. Please make sure that you follow up on those, uh, getting the continuous alcohol monitor and posting your bond. That has to be done today. Contact your attorney and you are free to leave the meeting. All right, thank you. Thank you.
Good afternoon. On um, this flu, we are on the record in case number 24-2164SD. Uh, you're appearing for arraignment purposes this afternoon on an allegation of a bond violation. You're appearing with Ms. Mistily, the defense attorney available through the Indigent Defense Council here to assist you. Ms. Mistily, did you have opportunity to review the allegations on that bond violation nature of the same with Ms. Flug? I did, and we also discussed her rights, and Ms. Flug has elected to admit the bond violation. So, Ms. Flug, you have the right to a hearing. You have the right to have your attorney represent you at that hearing. If you choose to admit the violation, you're going to waive those rights. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Uh, we will get the file to Judge Stepka. Uh, I don't know when it is that he will be able to accept your plea. Um, you will be remanded to jail until the time that you're able to see the judge. And for right now, then, ma'am, you are all set. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. You're here on case 2404542, People State of Michigan versus Roberto Alfonso Ortiz, appearance for the people. Thank you, Magistrate. Good afternoon. Steve Vincent for the people, P71917. Good afternoon. Jessica Scheib on behalf of Mr. Ortiz, who is from a reading under Stenses Constitutional Rights and stands mute. Thank you. Court will waive formal reading on our plea of not guilty. Mr. Ortiz, I'm scheduling a pretrial date via Zoom. You must attend October 21st. That's a Monday at 830 36th District Court. Judge Bryant via Zoom, October 21st. Understood? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Not guilty plea is entered on your behalf. That's the bond from the people. Magistrate, we're asking for a 10,000 cash assurity. We're asking for a tether as well as an alcohol tether. I think the allegations speak for themselves. We have a father-in-law who allegedly ended up assaulting his daughter-in-law to the point where she ended up breaking her, I believe it was a femur, as well as her knee and her foot. And apparently things had escalated in the house. I believe they were at the defendant's house as a direct result of the defendant asking an inappropriate question, allegedly regarding the complainant victim and whether or not she had a twin sister. And apparently the defendant didn't like the response that was given by both her as well as his son who were in the house. Um, and this is when the assault ended up occurring. There's a 22 year difference between this defendant and the daughter-in-law. It's a recent incident, Judge. It just happened in the last couple of weeks. And this defendant has a prior assaultive past. Um, he ended up pleading to a domestic violence in March of 2016 out of Oakland. Ended up getting your probation on that. So based on the history of DV, based on the assault of nature here, based on the severity of the injuries, we do feel as though this defendant is a danger at the very least to the complaint in this matter, um, the injuries are, are significant in nature. Uh, and respectfully, we're asking for that cash with the monitorization, both the physical monitoriza monitorization as well as the alcohol. Thank you, response. Your Honor, allegations, my client is presumed innocent unless proven guilty as beyond a reasonable doubt, charged as a misdemeanor, Your Honor. Um, been in custody since the 5th, um, Your Honor, um, and now today's the 8th. And most importantly, I would ask the court to ask them to mark the file medical and make sure he gets his medications immediately. He is diabetic. He has not received his medications. We know that's an issue going on at the jail, and it's very concerning. So he needs his medications as soon as possible. It's been three days already without them. Um, he's not on probation or parole, nothing pending. The only prior that uh, we just heard was a 2016 misdemeanor from six years ago. 
and no capious history whatsoever. The complaining witness is his son's girlfriend, who my client allowed to live with them when they had nowhere else to go. Um, and he allowed them to live with them. And then this, these allegations come about, Your Honor. Um, he maintains his innocence, but he is willing to go and stay at his sister's house and let them stay in his house that he allowed them to stay at. I mean, he will go stay at his sister's house. There's no issue with the no contact, Your Honor. Allegedly, it's from the 27th. It does have, you know, about two weeks age to it. No incidents that we are aware of in those days that have passed. Um, he will be at his court dates, respectfully asking the court to consider a personal bond, and he understands the no contact. Thank you, both. Your Honor, uh, Mr. I'm sorry. One more thing. Yeah, the people are yeah. asking for alcohol must, but you know, tether or anything like that, but he has no history of any alcohol incidents whatsoever on his record. So I do not believe that is necessary, neither is the tether, because he's uh no capious history. Thank you. I've heard advocacy from both parties. Uh Mr. Ortiz, your counsel's advocated well on your behalf. Uh, I had a few concerns. Uh, one is your prior criminal history. That's a domestic violence. It's similar to what we're here for today. And I, I know that was back in 2016, uh, but that is an assault of conviction. And now we have an allegation, a very assault of allegation resulting in substantial injury, uh, where it's alleged that you grabbed the complaining witness by her hair, dragged her down the hallway, pushed her in into the bathroom, where she fell, broke her foot, her femur, her knee, and shattered, shattered her knee and broke her left toe. Uh, the, off the allegations is um, that she was uh, badly injured, as the uh, allegation stated, and that her kids had witnessed everything. Uh, these are extremely assaultive allegations. The court finds uh, by clear and convincing evidence, uh, you are a, a danger to the complaining witness, uh, given the nature of this charge, how it's charged, and uh, your criminal history, no capious history, the court's aware of, but you're given your past assaultive history court feels comfortable setting bond to properly protect the safety of the complaining witness at a $25,000 personal bond, uh, given the nature of the misdemeanor as um, $25,000 personal bond with the following conditions. During this bond, Mr. Ortiz, there is no use of any alcohol, no illegal controlled substance. You are not to purchase or possess a firearm or any dangerous weapon, no weapons. During this bond, you're not to go anywhere near the Mandel Street address in the city of Detroit and absolutely no contact with the complaining witness, Ms. Manzalurio, and no contact with any complaining witness. There's no contact of any kind, thank you. No contact orally and writing through a third party at their place of residency, employment, or through any forms of social media. No contact with any complaining witness, no weapons. And to ensure, given your previous history, criminal assault of history, as well as the substantial allegations of injuries, uh, the bond is set for those reasons and uh, to properly protect the safety of the complaining witness, given the concerns the court's place, you will be filled with the GPS tether prior to being released. That will uh, place you under a curfew of 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, if you leave that home for any reason outside that curfew or go anywhere near the Mandel address or the complaining witness, you will be monitored via a tether. That's a, and you would be subject to get picked up without a warrant and have your bond conditions forfeited and or revoked. Do you have any questions on your court date or bond conditions, Mr. Ortiz? Any questions, sir, on your court date or your bond conditions? I'd like to speak to my attorney regarding everything you just mentioned to okay. me privately. Yep. No worries. I'm going to put you in a private breakout room right now, and then uh, whenever you're finished talking, uh, we'll go back on the record. One moment. Yeah, Andrew, can we make sure it's Mark's medical and he gets the medication? Yes, DDC, please mark his file medical for the reason stated by counsel. Ms. Mark Mr. Roberto Ortiz file medical, please. Yes, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you, sir. Right. The paper signed. He wouldn't sign it this morning because I didn't fill it out, and I asked him to help me fill it out, and he took off in his car. So I was going to ask, I don't know, I was talking to Sarah this morning because I came in and talked to her about it and I wanted to ask if the case could be dismissed and if he wants to file, he can do it on his own. Mr. Reynolds, did you wish to be heard? Uh, what do you mean? Well, Ms. Reynolds just told me she's asking me to dismiss the divorce case. In other words, she's not seeking to prosecute the case towards a divorce judge. Is that right, Ms. Reynolds? Yes. 
I mean, it's fine to get a divorce, but if he wants to do it, he can file for it. Because I feel like it's just a big game. And then when I asked him to help me this morning, it he took off because he didn't know how to fill it out either, and I asked him to help me fill it out. Well, Ms. Reynolds, you're the plaintiff. If you're telling me that you're not going to prosecute the case towards its eventual conclusion, which in a divorce case is a divorce judgment, then I'm likely to allow you to submit that order of dismissal and I'll back sign it. But I want okay. to hear from you, Ms. Reynolds. Ms. Reynolds is suggesting she's not going to prosecute the case towards a divorce. Uh, so did you wish to be heard on that suggestion or that claim, Mr. Reynolds? So, like, I guess if it's dismissed, then I'll have to file? If you want to be divorced. Okay. Well, I, I just don't want I just don't want this to drag on any more longer than it already has. Yeah, neither do I. Unfortunately, it sounds like it might drag on no matter what happens because if Miss Reynolds doesn't uh, prosecute her end of the case, you're going to have to file. You're then going to have the case assigned, and then we're still going to have to ultimately resolve the case in the same way. So it seems like a dog eating eating its own tail situation. But I'm not going to require a plaintiff to uh, proceed further if she's telling me she's not going to. So, Mr. Reynolds, is that what you, what you want me to do is dismiss the case? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Reynolds, anything further that you wanted to say for the record? Well, is there any way, like, we can just go with, through with the divorce and then she can get her stuff out later? Or? Well, it's a consent judgment if you guys consent and agree upon the terms. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, I mean, she can get her stuff out. We can get do the divorce and she can get her stuff out at a later date. Mr. Reynolds, what do you want to do with that? Nope. If he wants to do it, he can file for it. I'm not playing his games anymore. All right. Mr. Reynolds, anything further before I decide how to proceed? No. The court notes that this case is full of requests, offers, and then nothing following through. I don't know who's at fault or if both of you are at fault. Neither one of you are at fault. But since the very first time that I had involvement in this case, which was now a matter of months ago, there was no agreement because the plaintiff said she needed access to a storage shed. Then defendant offered to get access to the storage shed. Plaintiff didn't have the time and didn't want to be available or couldn't make herself available. So I adjourned on two different occasions now. We came back last month and the same issue was in place. Plaintiff wanted access and then offered access. Plaintiff couldn't make herself available. And now we're here on a third time of the same thing. Again, the law in the state of Michigan requires that a plaintiff prosecutes a case towards judgment. The plaintiff has clearly and unambiguously told me on the record she's not going to do that. That's unfortunate because we all know the background, which is if this case is dismissed, and it will be today, then if the divorce is going to proceed, Mr. Reynolds, you're going to have to be the plaintiff. You're going to want to be the one who has to get the paperwork in order and prosecute the case until a judgment is entered. It's really a waste of everyone's time, but that's the way that we're at, and that's the finding I'm going to enter, is that this case is not capable of being resolved because the plaintiff is refusing to move forward and do what she's obligated to do as a plaintiff. The court will issue that order of dismissal for that reason, and if and when you refile, Mr. Reynolds, I'm likely to be assigned, and we'll get ourselves through the case in that fashion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And... Uh, what are your pronouns? She. Okay, thank you. Hey, right, counsel. Hello, Your Honor. Sophia Arnold, Rule 9, present with Jacob Lowe, case number 24L1747, on for arraignment. The defendant has received the city's criminal complaint. The defense will waive a formal reading and ask the court to enter a plea of not guilty. Uh, defense will stipulate to probable cause for today's hearing only. The defendant has been advised of their rights at arraignment. And um, Mr. Lowe does qualify for appointed counsel. We have Miss Lowe. Miss Lowe? Yeah. Um, has been appointed to our office um, on a few different charges. And we ask that we also be appointed on the new charge and that they track along together. Okay, one moment. And uh, your name is Jacob Henry Lowe. Yes. Sure. Is there another name that you prefer to go by? Um, I still, I haven't really figured it You're out. You're working on the name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and are you, is your date of birth? Yeah. All right. And when you get an address, it's important that you update that with your uh, attorney. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll hear from city. 
Now, the city would be asking for uh, $3,000 cash or bond. Uh, the basis for that is uh, $500 on this one arraignment and then the uh, five other pretrials for violations of conditions of release. Uh, since June of this year, uh, the defendant has these six pending matters. And previous to that, there were one, two, one, two, three, three prior matters in this year. So a total of nine uh, criminal charges uh, this year. The city does note that this is the defendant's only criminal history, but the city is concerned. Uh, warrants have been noted uh, in uh, nearly uh, all of the matters, and therefore that serves as the basis for the city's request. Defense. Defense would like to ask and request for the defendant to be released on his own personal recognizance. I'd her. like to, her own personal recognizance. I apologize. Um, the defendant has, um, I'd like to further note, uh, this is her only criminal history um, and that she also plans on getting assistance in a different part of town and um, not returning to the area. And when is this move uh, due to take place? If she, Please. if she is released, as soon as she is released. Okay, and um, I want to just talk to defense. The city makes a good point. Uh, the charges are racking up. There's multiple, multiple charges. And um, the city is concerned, of course, concerned as well. Um, but the court is encouraged that there's going to be some movement forward and moving to a different part of town or a different area so that, that uh, you're decreasing the risk and likelihood. Is that correct? That is correct. We believe that getting housing will solve some of her matters. Okay, and so what is the word on the housing? That's that's what's happening. You're getting housing. I know the process. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about how to get it and who to go through, and that's my my mission. That's my goal is just to get it. And I've heard that it isn't very difficult. Okay. To um, yeah. Hold on one second. Yeah, it's a greater lakes. It's it's okay, Miss Miss Arnold. Uh, have you linked up? Uh, have you linked up Miss Lowe with the social services? Um, she has advised us that she's looking into Greater Lakes, but we will be in contact with her if um that doesn't work out for some reason. If she needs, well, another I'm I'm asking you, uh, as a friend of the court, to mm -hmm. work with Allison. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Okay, Ms. Lowe, I'm going to release you. Um, and the reason I'm going to release you is that uh, Horwath Law has stated that they will be working with their social services expert to help you uh, and guide you to the supports that you need. Thank you. I don't want to see you again in this circumstance. Uh -huh. Because if I do see you again in this circumstance, I'm very likely to listen to everything the city has to say about however high bail they want to put. Do you understand that? So I'm setting a date of November 7th at 2 p.m. I am going to require your appearance. The court does find that that is the least restrictive alternative in this matter. And if I didn't say it, I am appointing Horwath Law without a promissory note. So your attorney's information will be on the paperwork that you get today. Please reach out to them. 
Between now and your next court date, have no criminal law violations. Update address changes immediately with the court. Use only your true legal name and date of birth. I'm going to say abide by all trespass orders. Yes, abide by all valid trespass orders. I'm going to also say work with Orwath Law social services expert specialist. Yes, to link to services. Hey, I'm saving this document for review and signature. Defense is signed. Okay, I'm just gonna place. Marking served on defendant and I'm signing. Anything else in this matter? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Be taking a five minute recess. Yeah. All right, please. For now, reconvene. Please proceed. Next matter is 23 CRB 1134, State of Ohio versus Robert Pardue. Mr. Pardue is present with our counsel, Mr. Cox, here on behalf of the law director's office. And we're scheduled for trial today on charges of disorderly conduct, trespass, and open container in a public place. Yeah. Mr. Pardue, did you wish to have a trial today? Uh, I'd be so pleased with the court. Uh, it's not whether it pleases me, it's whether you want to have a trial or not. Uh, I just wanted to get taken care of. I, I came back. I'm, I'm not running from justice system at all. And I do recognize that I have to take care of this. Okay. Okay. So do you want to have a trial today? Do you want to enter a different plea? There's, there's no real way around it. I guess I have to do it. You have to do what? Plea, plea out. Okay. You want to enter a guilty plea today or a no contest plea? Uh, I'll go with a guilty plea. Okay. All right. We'll get you a paperwork to fill out here. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. All right, let's take a brief recess. Please proceed. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Party, is your wish to change your plea to guilty here today? Yes, sir. Okay. You understand that a guilty plea is a complete admission of your guilt? Yes, sir. Okay. You understand you're waiving your right to an attorney today? Yes, I do understand. Okay. Did you sign this change of plea form? I believe I did. Okay. Did you understand it? I read it all through. Okay. Yes, did, I do understand. You, you do understand it? Okay. You understand by pleading guilty today, you're waiving your right to a trial, either to a jury or to the court? Yes, sir. Okay. You also understand... At a trial, you'd be able to call witnesses to testify on your behalf, subpoena witnesses to force them to appear here and testify, and present evidence in your own behalf. You understand you're giving up those rights today? Yeah, I understand that, and I understand I don't have any new, new charges either. Okay. Um, 
Okay, there's a third charge that was left off the uh, form here for trespass. Be aware of that, Mr. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that. Okay. Did you want to plead guilty to that charge as well? Uh, is, isn't what I signed sufficient enough? There are three charges. I'm just I'm, I'm just informing you that that one was left off of there. Did you want to plead guilty to all the charges today? Isn't my admission to guilt sufficient enough? Yes, but there was a charge that was left off the sheet, so I added it to the sheet. Did you want to plead guilty to all three charges today? I'm here in front of you. I'd just like to get it taken care of, sir. Okay, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Okay. As I said, at a trial, you'd be able to call witnesses to testify on your behalf, subpoena witnesses to force them to appear and testify, and present evidence in your own behalf. You understand you're giving up those rights? Yes. I already signed. Okay, you understand that? Yes, I okay. signed. You understand you're giving up the right to question any witnesses the state would have against I you? I don't have any questions for anybody. Okay. And finally, you understand you're giving up the right that the state proved beyond a reasonable doubt you did, in fact, commit these offenses. Uh, I gave up myself voluntarily to the Heat Police Department without any resistance. Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes, I, okay. I gave myself up. Uh, Mr. Cox, you want to state the facts briefly? Thank you, Your Honor. About uh, August 4, 2023, in the city of Heath, Licking County, Ohio, officers responded to the crow were located in that city on a report of a man that was passed out in the parking lot there. They responded, as did the uh, Heath Fire Department, found the one Mr. Robert Pardue asleep in the parking lot up against a, uh, a fence post there. They tried to rouse him. Uh, he had to be checked out by the medics at that point in time. He was under the influence of alcohol, uh, heavily so. Um, he was trespassed at that time. He got up, he proceeded to walk to the other side of the Kroger parking lot where there was a picnic bench and sat down. Uh, some of his items, personal items were there. He was told to leave after given several opportunities to do so, refused to do so. Um, he was then arrested for disorderly conduct based on the ongoing inconvenience and noise <coughs> alarm uh, to the public as well as the Kroger uh, Corporation and the representative there at that time. He was charged with criminal trespass based on refusal to leave after being trespassed and uh, during the course of the uh, impounding of his items, uh, open bottle of gin was found uh, in his group. Item. So, Your Honor, based on that, we're asking for a guilty plea to each charge. Thank you. Or guilty finding, excuse me. Based on that, I'll accept Mr. Party's guilty plea as being voluntarily and intelligently made, knowing what his rights are, finding guilty of. Disorderly conduct, trespass, and open container in public. State of a recommendation today. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is an old case. This came up in August of 2023. Uh, at that time, a bond was posted. Mr. Pardue failed to appear. He did appear previously. Uh, I believe that was late September under the influence of Blue 202. My math indicates approximately 25 days of credit. I'm not asking for any more time, considering what this is. Um, but beyond that, we defer to the court. Thank you, Judge. Twenty days. Okay. Mr. Cox, do you want to say anything today? Uh, just that I, I believe I served a sufficient amount of time on all the offenses. I hope that you release me today. I recently had a granddaughter born, 14th grandchild, and I have another grandchild on the way next month, my 15th grandchild. And <laughs> I know my daughter needs me there to help her raise my grandkids. Thank you. But <clears throat> having said all that, I've been spending my money in the state of Ohio since 2002. I come here this because this is where the insane clown posse goes. I myself am a professed Alaskan juggalo. I believe that the family provides for me. And so, when I do come here, I do not come here to cause trouble. It's just that that fact that I was picked up last year, I was intoxicated. Yes, I do admit that. But I was trespassed from Walmart. 
And when they trespassed me from Walmart, they watched me walk across the street from Walmart to Kroger. And I do recall this too. There was no Kroger representative there. People think that I do not have any control over my alcohol limits, but I do remember everything that happened. I was there charging my phone simply because there's a picnic table there and there's an outlet. And, you know, I do realize that it was after closing time and they don't like people in their parking lots. But as I said, I was not causing trouble. And I did give, up, give myself a voluntary. Okay. I did not resist arrest. And anytime, I, I'm getting, I realize I'm getting way too old to be getting in trouble. And anytime that I do come in contact with police, I do not resist arrest. And I did make it to court per your request. And I think that's all I have to say right now. Okay. On the uh, disorderly conduct, I'll impose a $150 fine, court costs, 20 days in jail, 20 days credit. <coughs> Trespass will be 20 days jail, 20 days credit. And the open container will be a $50 fine. Any question about that, Mr. Pardue? What would be the total sum of my... Um, uh, restitution? It's no restitution. You have two hundred dollars of fines and then court costs. Okay, so what what is it? I don't know what the court costs are. So about another about another two hundred dollars. So about four hundred dollars altogether? Yes. Alright, I I will be doing my best to pay that back. Okay, thank you. And I promise to not ever appear in your court again. I hope that's the case. Witness for somebody else. Okay. You want to have Thank you. Problem? So am I done? You'll be time? released from the jail today. Great. Ten.